right, well, here we go. What's up, my friends? It's been a week or so. I haven't uploaded to YouTube because I've been on punishment mode for something I uploaded. But at any rate, over the past week, I've been working out here in my portable outdoor shop, if you will. And uh, I thought I'd just kind of share some of the projects that I've been working on over the last month or so. Um, most of you know, I already know I have my other woodworking channel where I upload whatever I'm working on at the moment, but uh, right now this is basically where I work. <laughs> and uh, you know, I've got this little rolling cart, which I found in a dumpster at a school. It's got all my sandpaper, everything I need, and I, you know, everything's pretty convenient. But having the right tools is an awesome thing as well. I mean, simple things like a router, router table, planer, sander, and buffer and all that stuff but it's funny because I built this earlier it's a motor I found I don't know what it came off but it's a relatively quiet and not too strong of a motor and so I mounted it on this plexiglass plate and then I mounted that in this piece of plywood this can be moved taken somewhere else the reason I did it vertical like this is the intention was to buff things like this, which I wanted to make my own bridges and my own nuts for like guitars. And the nut is the part that goes right on the top of the guitar where the strings, you know, connect. And so I thought it would be nice to have something where I could buff out things like this without having to use a giant buffing wheel where it can knock the thing out of your hand. So, the point being that it's all kind of about building your own tools, you know, coming up with your own ideas. Um, the same with tools like this, like, I have a box of drills and drill stuff and a box of routers and router stuff, but they all have their own boxes, I just, I don't want to take them in and out of boxes all the time, it's just a huge hassle. Uh, same with all these other tools that I just kind of have sitting here, we've got various chisels, and rasp and a hammer and you know everything where I know where it's at I also have this bag but it's just I don't want to have to look in there and dig for things I like to have things right where they should be you know what I mean <laughs> so out here it's the old 15 minute free building I guess and uh, lately I've just been going to town working on shit I've got this is a cutting board design I'm working on right now and uh, it's a pretty simple pattern it, it's it's almost I guess like a herringbone pattern I guess it is but when you look at it from the side it looks wavy up and down wavy anyway and but it's not finished I don't think this purple heart will surround it in the end but I'm going to basically to make this you glue a bunch together in straight lines then you cut it diagonally at 45 on the table saw then you come back and you glue them together, flip every other one. Now what I'm gonna do is cut it at 45s again, and I'm gonna flip those back and forth, and then maybe even do it again with a couple strips of this purple heart, and maybe some sapel, which is, I, I think that's, or sapele or whatever. And I also have a bunch of, uh, bunch of mahogany over here that I would like to use. And uh, right here I've got my, you know, I have this old school planer right here. It's a uh, super vintage number four Stanley planer, and I just refurbished it today. It has been gathering rust because tools will gather rust, but I cleaned all the parts. Everything is polished down now to a nice shine. This handle broke off years ago, so I made my own out of Paduke, and uh, it's... I, I followed the original shape of the handle and I think it turned out pretty good. It's kind of hard to make shapes like this, cutting on the router and stuff, making sure you don't break it. But uh, then I got some fretboards I was working on. I've got the Purple Heart. This is uh, your old school Bolivian rosewood fretboard with uh, glowing fret markers. This is just a sample piece of Koa that I used as a marker and to test out some of my templates. And then I have this zebra wood one right here. I think zebra wood's a beautiful wood. Um, this still one, these still have to be cut, but they're marked with a knife and ready to go. 
And zebra wood is gorgeous. I can't wait to put this on a guitar. We have also, I have another piece, another fretboard. Look at that one. And then a whole other piece with totally different grain on it. And I think these are both gonna be awesome. They're just gonna be amazing. I, I love these different exotic woods, but mostly it's about, it's not about tonality on an electric guitar. It's about the density of the fingerboard, the durability of it, and the ability to not have to finish it so it'll have its own natural oils. Purple Heart is very unique in the fact that it's very dense. It's porous. You can see the pores in there, but it's not extremely porous. And what I mean by porous, I guess, that's kind of misleading because it's not like red oak or something where there's tunnels going through it where you can literally blow water through it. But uh, it's more that uh, you have to kind of fill in these little tiny divots if you want to finish it really well and super smooth. But that's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. But at any rate, uh, over here I've got my guitars. I had an incident yesterday, which I mentioned on my other channel. And uh, this was my one-piece pine guitar, which I'm working on. Um, yeah, here's a pair of zebra wood chopsticks I just made earlier <laughs> for fun. Um, so this is a purple heart fretboard. And I got all the frets laid out everything good to go. I had the nut on it. I decided before I go any further, I'm going to put in the strings and make sure that it doesn't fail me. Because I had a concern, and my concern was this. If you flip it over, you can see that it's a one-piece body. And that was fine, but once I carved it down, I realized that there was a failure right here. You can see it. There was a peg, I guess a half inch, five eighths inch peg that went through the table to connect these two pieces of wood because it's right on the seam. You can see the different colors. And I did not know that until I'd carved it all the way down and I was so bummed, but I thought, nope, I'll make it work, it'll be fine. So what I've done now is glued it back on. It snapped right here, all the way around to here. And then, carefully flip it, because I don't want to damage it again, that all the way along here, snap. And I'm hoping that the glue I have now, as long as well as a carbon fiber uh, cover and top, I'll at least be able to salvage it for myself. And that's okay. I didn't <coughs> expect it to turn out perfect. Here's the base I was working on. This is the very first one that most people saw, which was, I started about five years ago. It's made of mahogany. Then I routered out the center. I put a piece of uh, hard maple in there. Then I put in some purple heart on that maple. And right now it's not attached to the neck. It's just, it's so tight that it fits perfectly. And uh, this fingerboard is rosewood and it has glow in the dark, epoxy um, uh, inlays. And then it's got the glow in the dark, uh, the neck, which is see-through which you can't really see right now, but that's fine. I've already shown all this stuff. I'm just going through all the things that I've been working on over the last week. This is a mock-up of my first bass guitar from when I was 15 years old.